A back and forth dialogue between a few characters is easy enough to write, but things can start to get out of control when the characters in your screenplay begin speaking in unison or over each other. Hey, that's right, let's see ya. Shots it! So we need to simplify these complex dialogues with a few tried and true techniques that you can add to your bag of screenwriting tricks. If your script has a generic group of characters all saying the same thing at the same time, then there are two basic approaches to write their dialogue. The first is to treat the lines like a sound effect. Some of the crowd point at Jessica and Paul, shouting with religious fervor, Bisan al Gai, Bisan al Gai. That means keeping everything within the description and usually emphasizing the dialogue in one way or another. But if the dialogue is important enough to specify, then you might just be better off treating it like, well, dialogue. Pirates. All you need to do is use a generic group name for the character heading and write the dialogue as normal. If the speakers don't fit neatly under a generic group name, you can clarify who's speaking within the context of the scene and description, and then use all for your character heading. Angel spies some of the faces. Tom Weaver, Skinner, Joyce Cooper, Annette Roper, James Reaper, Reverend Shooter, Dr. Hatcher, Amanda Favor. It's all about the greater good. All the greater good. Or if you want to get specific about who's speaking in unison, you can include every name in the character heading separated by a slash. The trio wheels, spots Hagrid grinning at them. They instantly look guilty. Harry slash Ron slash Hermione. No. Or formatted as a list. Named characters can also be combined with generic and group names in the same manner. Soldiers slash Mary slash Eowyn. If you need a group to deliver distinct lines, but it isn't important that the reader know exactly who in the group is saying them, you can take a similar approach with the actual dialogue by separating the lines with a slash. Reporters. Bobby Rick. Or sometimes an ellipsis. But if the exact dialogue isn't all that important, then a bit of description telling how the group is acting could be more efficient. This might mean treating the dialogue like a general sound, as in a crowd cheering. The crowd explodes and cheers as the huge doors at one end of the arena suddenly burst open with ten chariots thundering. Or writing a more general statement like reporters ask questions, as the cacophony of questions erupts from the press. Or giving the main idea of the dialogue without all the specific lines. Nick stands behind the door as he opens for Go and Tanner. We hear dozens of reporters. Tanner, can we get a statement? But if the dialogue is really all important enough to explicitly write, then it's probably worth splitting into individual lines and indicating any overlap as needed using a different method. The simplest way to write overlapping dialogue is to add a parenthetical that indicates the speech of a character overlaps the previous speaker. Over. The seven years, on the Apple you're still doing it. You're talking about the slots. There's something wrong with you. If you want more control over where the overlap begins, you might consider separating the overlap dialogue with a forward slash or parentheses. Though I'd personally recommend forward slashes, since parentheses can get confused with dialogue parentheticals depending on your spacing. But another format you might see is something known as dual dialogue, where the writer splits the dialogue into columns with one character on each side so that the dialogue literally overlaps. Hey, Ma, you've grown so much! You My broke apologies. and meet me at the hotel. <laughs> I couldn't find you anywhere. Well, you didn't look there. hard enough. Well, maybe I didn't recognize you because you're so beautiful oh, now. Oh, stop it. You can get more specific about which parts overlap by breaking up each character's dialogue. And if you need to get really specific, you can again use parentheses or slashes to indicate the exact overlapped portions. If you're considering the dual dialogue format, keep in mind that trying to read two separate columns at nearly the same time can be super confusing. But that doesn't have to be to your disadvantage. It's difficult to follow a conversation where people speak over each other. If you want the reader to experience the same frustration, chaos, or confusion that will be present in the produced scene, then dual dialogue can achieve that. Um, oh, oh, freak out. Freak out. Freak out. Freak out. Chance to perform an open heart surgery. Well, Molly plugged a hole with his finger. I thought you could use someone to talk to. Well, I don't. Someone who actually cares. Thanks for asking, but I don't. Nearly every source claims slightly different margins, so just use whatever your software defaults to, and no one will mind. If instead of group or overlapping dialogue, you need a second speaker to cut off the first, then you'll want to learn how to use dashes by watching this video covering how dashes and ellipses are used and often overused in screenplays.